Welcome back. In this tutorial, we're going to explore a new and improved feature in Adobe Photoshop CC 2018 called Select and Mask. And essentially what it does is allows you to cut something out of a picture. Typically a person, but it could be anything. Um, a common term for this is cobbing, cutting out of the background. And it used to be a whole lot more difficult. Adobe has really enhanced the tools to make the copying process a whole lot easier. So you need to have Photoshop open because we're going to be working in Photoshop. If you don't have it open, pause the video, go ahead and open it up. Don't worry about creating a document or anything. Just have it open. Then I'm going to switch over to Deviant Art. There's a link to this on the class website. And it links to this starter file, which is a stock reference photo that I found. A cool gallery of some cosplay photos, which are perfect for our comic book coming up. These are kind of royalty free stock images, which is great. So we're able to use them in our project. And they're shot like a professional photographer would shoot it to where if you look, the model is on is lit well and then is on this very simple background which gives us a nice contrast between our model and the background which makes the whole process way way easier if you're on a complicated background like you're taking a picture of somebody at the park or something like that you can still use this technique but it's just going to take you a lot more time and a lot more finagling to make it perfect anyhow let's access this image we're going to hit download to access it. It's going to pop up in a new window like this. And very simply, we're just going to click on the image and drag over to our Photoshop icon and let go. And that will open it automatically into Photoshop for us. And then I'm going to hit Command-0 just to get it to fit the screen, to zoom in a little bit automatically to my screen size. Don't worry about the percentage up here. Your screen may be a different resolution. Just have it fit to the screen. Should work great. Now, having any of our selection tools active, it doesn't matter which one. I'm going to click on the rectangular marquee tool in my example. So I have a selection tool active, and then our options bar up here gives us this fancy tool called Select and mass create or refine a selection and you notice it says create or refine right now I don't have anything selected and that's fine I can start that way old school you used to have to make a selection first before you can do what was called refine edge and even before that it was even more difficult anyhow I clicked on it and now we have our select and mask window open and you're going to notice some properties and settings over here on the right a options bar here on the top and some basic tools over here on the left and these are essentially selection tools or variations on selection tools I'm starting off there's view mode right here there are several view modes and we're gonna look at a few of them we're gonna start off with onion mask or onion skinning sorry and my transparency is at 55 get somewhere around there you'll be fine now, you could come over here to the left and use this quick selection tool. Or, since this is a nicely shot photo, there's this great new button up here called Select and Mask. And Photoshop's going to automatically, or automagically, select most of our subject for us. So I'm going to click on that. It's going to do a little magic. It's thinking. It's going, all right, I'm awesome, I can do this, and pow! It got us pretty close. It got us about 90% of what we need. You can notice that the background is checkered, which means it's transparent, and then we're seeing 100% opacity of what has been made a selection. However, if you notice, here in between our arm and the head, it's not checkered, so that's not transparent. That's the original background. We don't want that. You notice it in the hair in the hair hair, and probably in a couple other spots would be some tweaks we need to make. So with our quick selection tool active, W shortcut key, I'm gonna hold the option key on the Mac, 
And I'm just going to, oops, I got a little bit too much right there. So let me undo that, Command Z. I'm going to option click in that gray area right there. And along the hair also, like that. And that's taking away the background. Don't worry if some of the hair disappears, we'll fix that later. Then I'm noticing that this guy, right, is partly, partially transparent. How am I going to fix that? Quick selection tool still active. I'm not holding option. I'm just going to click and then drag a little bit over it. It added some of this back. So option key to deselect. Again, if you screw up the hair, I'm clicking on it to get it back, but we will fix that momentarily. All right, that got us pretty close. I'm looking down here. There's something behind her boot. So... I'm going to option click to get rid of that. Anything else we're missing? It's looking pretty good so far. Okay. So we got rid of a little bit of the detail on the hair. And we can see that if we switch view modes. I'm going to switch um, onto white or onto black maybe. There we go. Onto black will be great. We'll go onto black. That puts our subject on a black background. And you can see all of this white kind of area messing stuff up so we're going to switch tools we're going to come over here to the left or r on the keyboard for the refine edge brush tool with the bracket key right bracket key on keyboard i can make it bigger left bracket key makes it smaller and then i'm just going to adjust the brush size and i'm going to come over the edge of the hair like this and photoshop's going to try to detect what's hair and what's background. It gets it pretty close. It's not perfect, but again, trust me, a whole lot easier than it ever used to be. You'll notice it got rid of part of the sword. We'll fix that in a future step when it's a little bit easier. I'm gonna minus, uh, make that smaller, left bracket key, just to get a little more precise. And I'm gonna come in here, this little hair like that, get it pretty close. And then right here, there's some hair. I'm going to get that and we got a pretty pretty close selection you can also I also sometimes look at black on white just to make sure that there's no glaring omissions here like maybe this area so then I would take my brush tool right B for brush and where this is kind of gray I'm just going to paint that in so it's 100% right I could do that here, but I'm not going to. I'm going to do that in a next step where it's a little bit easier. Next thing I like to do is I like to feather my edge just a little bit. It smooths the transition, and it depends on the resolution of your photo. This one's pretty high resolution. I'm going to go up to about a 2.5 pixel feather. Just smooth some of the rough parts a little bit. Let's go back to onion skin. Or actually, let's go to on black because I want to point out this white glow right around our model because that background was light. And, we'll, and let's do our fix right here. All right. So we have that white edge and we even see white in the hair. Down here at the bottom, bottom of our properties panel, bottom right says output settings. And there's this handy dandy little checkbox right here decontaminate colors. I'm going to click on that. And you'll notice most of that white went away. So it's able to detect what that background color is and for the most part get rid of it. And then we're going to output to there's a down arrow over here and there's several options. New layer, new layer with mask, stuff like that. 99 point whatever percent of the time I do new layer with a mask. New layer gets rid of everything and you can't fix it, right? We need to fix a couple things. We always want to work non-destructively, so new layer with a mask. Make sure that's checked and click OK. Next, I'm going to click on the background layer, and you notice it's created a mask, and it's hidden the original background layer. Turn the eyeball off. But I want to click on that so that I can then add an adjustment layer, solid color, and I'm going to make it red just so it really stands out on the background. I'm gonna look for where red maybe shines through like on this 
sword right here. So I'm going to take my zoom tool and I'm going to zoom in to this particular area and I'm going to click on the mask. This is very, very important. Beginners sometimes just click on the layer and what we're going to do is use the paintbrush tool to paint white in. You notice white reveals, black conceals, so we want to reveal that sword. If you click on this, on the thumbnail of the image, you will be destroying pixels. You will be painting directly on the picture and damaging pixels. You want to make sure that your layer mask is active. Do not paint on the picture. And then we have a brush tool over here on the left. On our toolbar, brush tool, or B for brush. And I'm going to hit D to get my default swatches which is gonna give me a white foreground color. All right, so white foreground. And then I can left bracket or right bracket to make my brush bigger or smaller. I'm gonna go kind of small. I'm on my layer mask again, and I'm going to paint in white. All right, and white is going to get rid of that red and show all of the sword, okay? And I can look through you can hold space bar and get the handle and you can just kind of go through and make sure everything looks okay, which I think it does. We are pretty, pretty close, right? That's one of the awesome things about a simple background when hit command zero to zoom out is that it does a really good job. More complex backgrounds, again, you're gonna have to do a lot more brushing with white and black to get stuff back. I'm gonna take this color fill layer we don't need anymore. I'm going to delete it, click yes. I want to save a good habit because you might use this image in another project, another file, in InDesign. The industry standard file type for this type of thing is a TIFF file. A TIFF file is really high resolution um, and it saves transparency, this checkered background. So I wanna show you that for a second. We could just copy the whole layer over to a new project, but saving a TIFF file is something you'd have to do in the industry, so let's check it out. Let's do File and Save As. And then if you have a small dialog box, get a big one by clicking that arrow. Then I'm gonna to go to my desktop. You guys would wanna to save to your Google Drive folder and create a new folder called Comic Book Cover. I'm not gonna do that. I have a tutorial folder on my desktop. So you wanna be in Google Drive, Go to your projects folder and then you want to create a new folder called comic book cover and create and I'm going to rename this to Black Widow and I do not want a PDF I want a TIFF file and we do not, well, we could keep the layers, might as well. We'll keep the layers. We don't want to embed that color profile. I'm gonna click save. This window is gonna pop up and we want LZW compression. It's gonna make the file size a little bit smaller, but it's virtually lossless. You cannot notice the compression. And then save transparency, which is really important to ignore that pop-up message save transparency and click OK. Including layers will increase file size. That's fine for this particular project. It's not gonna be that big anyways. Click OK. Now it has saved it as a TIFF for us, which will be a good starting point for our next tutorial.